Right, welcome, this is part 17 of Project Manic. Now today I'm just going to do a bit more of the wiring. Uh, there are parts of projects that are boring and there are parts that are interesting. This isn't the usual kind of fun stuff like surgery and grinding and cutting and welding and making physical changes. Those parts of any project are really interesting and very cool to watch but this is sometimes the boring stuff. It's just getting past this this issue of getting all the wiring done and it is notoriously time consuming it really is but today's not going to be a long video i promise i'm keeping it under 10 minutes um purely because i just want to run this wiring rather than having to film every bit it's just a start finish and show you where i am so far i've got to run the mains cable the earth cable and then secure some of that wiring out of the way it is really as simple as that but it's just fiddle 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 twist fiddle cable length cut it's just time consuming as anybody knows who does wiring i keep going on about wiring i don't mind it's not the end of the world. It isn't that hard, really, and honestly, it's just boring. It really is, but it's got to be done. Once I can get past that, I can get all the lights working on the back end, choose what lights are going to happen, what lights I'm going to use, uh, then I can get it all wired in and start on the most interesting bit of all to come. But there we are. Stick around, stay tuned. So we're going to make some progress today. secure that solenoid. What would we do without zip ties, eh? What would we do? Right, so that's the main lead, which is about, I don't know, that much too short, but I'm going to use this. This is, I used to, I used to a uh, Toyota Supra with a decent stereo in, and this was all the stuff for the ice. Uh, you can buy all this stuff just off the shelf in your local car shop, so I've got a lot of this left over. Um, in fact, pretty hefty lines the fuses and stuff and the power amps I used to have on it but this will give me a strong connection for what I need on this and it's good quality stuff all these ends that I've got on this are all gold plated ends so they'll get a good connection just get my 80 degrees in that And that would give me a, a beefy old mains lead. I'll get that later. Alright, there we are. And that gives me loads of leadage. So, it's got to root it some way that looks half decent. Okay, that's that run, and then just a load of slack there, which I'll cut. I'm going to actually drill a hole in the box, feed it through a grommet, and then run it when I've got the uh, got the battery in. Okay. 
one strike steel right there. Pilot, got the size five. <laughs> it goes through quick. Just going to pop a grommet in this hole so it don't chafe away at the wire. Very cool to cut your main lead, isn't it? There it is. There. Probably can't see that very well. The lead goes through there. And the earth lead lives down the back of the engine, always bolts onto the engine. You always bolt an earth lead onto your engine, not onto your frame, because um, you just do. And uh, I've got this, which is, uh, this is an earth lead form, again, from a, an amplifier system. And it's a bit beefier than that. And as I'm running it longer, and it's going to be a longer lead, I'm going to run it thicker so that I get the same level of earth. You get the maths, yeah. So that's the standard length which comes to there, which finishes about there. And it gives me that much extra, almost perfect length to run up to the battery. So all I've got to do, that's already got an end on it, which I had on a amplifier. So all I've got to do is route that through the relevant path that the original one was, which is kind of down the side of the air box. I hope it just feeds through because the the factory puts the loom in before the airbox clearly and I don't want to be taking that out because they are a bastard to get back in here it is perfect come on I've got you well, look as you can get a fingertip to it I can't get hold of it there we go that's it Come on, you bastard, come on. That's it. Right. And let's go do. Let's find this path down to the back of the motor. Okay. This little earth wire comes out the loom and it just joined the earth terminal there. So obviously it's not long enough, so I've got to extend that with some extra cable. You can buy lengths of cable from your car shop, so it's quite safe. Thanks. Now I could, I know, I could solder this and then heat shrink it and make a lovely job. But I haven't got any heat shrink or any flux. 
So it will just be what it is. What it is. Just going to tape it to the loom, just to the back light wiring to keep it tidy. Every two inches, just to keep it out of the way, really. It's only a little earth lead and it goes towards the front of the bike from the battery terminal, so it could be a could be an earth to the ignition or something or the lights, I doubt it, but it's gonna go. I'd imagine it's just a basic earth, it's only thin. Don't know, ain't got Warren diagram. Obviously, you know, if you're going to run any wiring at all, anywhere, through metal, through sheet metal, then you just need to pop a rubber grommet in, one of them, through which the, the, the wiring can pass, and it won't chafe. And there's nothing worse than chafing. Just feed them in. Right. That done. Nearly there for this little expedition. Right. Now as this earth wire was connected, it was, uh, where are we? There. It was spliced in with the battery terminal, so I'll push that through there too. I'll take its place next to it. And there we are. Right, just some clipping up, and we are done for the minute. All right, so there we are. That is about as tidy down there as that's going to get, or needs to be. It's all clipped up and out of the way. That's as neat as I think it needs to be. I've put that piece of armoured cable there, I think, just to run that so it doesn't chafe on anything or so that there's a good insulation from this live to any of these power leads and then just run it up in through a grommet same as the other side there oops same as that other side and then I've got quite simply earth leads that side apparently that side I haven't got um, I've got the ends I've got a couple of those gold plated ends to go on but I'm gonna wait till the battery's in then I'm gonna finally route them so that they're within an inch of slack which is perfect they're a real neat job so they'll just stay there for now the rear wiring all this is clipped away now looking a bit better than it did and that rear wiring is a bit to be done with that obviously I've got number plate light there um, rear light harness and indicators which so all the wiring's there all I've got to do, I've got some indicators, some rather amazing ones, and they're going to go in here. I've got a little bit welded tab on for that, which won't be a problem. And the rear light, still deciding. But there we are, a bit more of the boredom that is wiring. There we are. You know what? Come in the garage this morning, I didn't even tend to film this. I just thought, oh, I'll just get a little bit more done so that when I start the next video, it'll look much better. But then you start filming and then you get carried away. Now that's been three hours nearly nearly three hours it's just never ending but it's good because it's progressive every little step forward is a step closer to the big finishing panel that goes over the top of it all and obviously it's all an exercise in learning because i've done a bit of wiring over the past but i'm not brilliant at it and i know with the joints and stuff i could solder them uh, and then i could heat shrink them so they look fantastic but they're not going to get seen and it is a rat and survival bike 
So I'll do matters. There we are. Thanks for tuning in and watching Adobe's Garage. Always appreciate your amazing support. Thanks for watching. Ride safe, and I'll see you for the next one.